Hello and welcome to IFTV. I'm Kim Ingalls and it is day three's roundup of the NWG Innovation Festival at Newcastle Racecourse. The sun has been out, but have there been any light bulb moments? And what have been the highlights so far? Those are the questions I've been asking. But we're going to start with a look at the speakers who were in the house last night. We start with Elvorn Spencer, real name, Neil Malarkey. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about how to be a succeeder. My motto is don't be needy, be succeedy. Callum, do you want to be a succeeder? Yes! Okay, who else wants to be a succeeder? Yeah, everybody, yeah. Jerry doesn't even need a bother. Look, he's already there. He's a director. I'm going to say that we all make mistakes. Mine just happened to have been in front of the public, in front of millions of people over a 40 year career. So I'm going to point out my mistakes, how they've led to greater and more original things, and they've actually been opportunities. We always think of risk and failure as something that you learn from, and you don't have to learn from it. When we play poker, if we lose a hand of poker, we might have done absolutely the right thing, and actually doing something different the next time might be the exact wrong thing to do. The most important lesson in business is to treat people as you would treat them. Now he was a character. We have one of our sprint leaders with us from tomorrow's world, Martin Jackson, welcome to the programme. How is your sprint going? What have been the highlights so far? Oh, it's been a fantastic two days so far. We've covered so much ground and I think when you start off the sprint process, it's always a little bit of a leap of faith. You never quite know where it's going to go, but really we, we've taken the problem, we've dissected it and we're reaching a position now where we're starting to get some real outcomes that we feel that we can work upon for the next couple of days. I mean, day three, you're more than halfway through now. Yes. I mean, the work today, is that progress? Yes, it is. So it's building upon those ideas. So as I speak, the, the guys are back in the, in the tent now. They're voting upon the ideas now that we're going to carry forward. We had a great session at the end of yesterday where we started to visualise some concepts around ideas, various different time horizons. So some of those stretch right into the future. And are quite, will, will robots be digging up our roads in 2030? And those kinds of questions are being asked. Well, that's what I wanted to ask. I mean, if it's tomorrow's world you're looking ahead, is it all spaceships and that kind of thing? Um, actually, no, it's, it's a bit of both really. So we do have to stretch the mind a little bit and we do have to look at the art of the possible. I think the last 13 years and the progress that we've seen over that time period, the fact that we didn't have iPhones, for instance, 13 years ago, we do have to vision what might be possible and I think it's important that our sprint tackles both the technology elements but also the people elements of what 2030 might look like and we've been partnering with our HR colleagues to enable us to be able to vision the workplace of the future, the skills and the capabilities that we might need in that time horizon. Well, it's not just the grown-ups who've been having fun here today. Take a look at this. Alison's from Northumbrian Water and she's coordinated the STEM part of the festival. Now, how does this fit in with the grown-ups in the Innovation Festival? So for us at Northumbrian Water, um, creativity comes from diversity of thought and, and different perspectives. And young people are fantastic at bringing that, that extra diversity of thought. Kieran, what's the point of bringing your youngsters to something like this? Um, it's just for them to experience working together as a team, um, pushing what they know and what they've learned in the classroom taking them out different environments and just trying to get them to enjoy sessions like this, to enjoy technology and engineering and a bit of science as well. What have you been learning today? We've been learning about, and um, we've been making like pin, ping ball machines, which which was made of like, we had like spins that spin like things that made it like go to, like, to the other end and it was a challenge that we had to try and do. And did you manage the challenge? Um, not really, but we tried our best. So, Summer, what have you been learning about this morning? We've been learning about air. And what do you think about science as a subject? I think it's really good and it's really interesting. So you just didn't know that science could be so fun? Yeah. Have you all enjoyed it? Yeah! 
We've heard already this week from the flooding sprint, but with me now is the leader, Chris Jones. Chris, we had Darren in the other day and he told us about prediction, mitigation and response. We want the nitty gritty. What problems have you come up with? What solutions are you beginning to look at? What progress have you made? Well, interestingly, we're seeing uh, sort of something emerge across all of those themes, which is becoming more joined up in the way that we approach flooding. So in prediction, can we bring data together from different sources and present it in a way that delivers sort of more insight than we can get from those different sources as we take them separately? In mitigation, you know, we're, we're often out there advising communities, advising people and businesses what they can do to reduce the impacts of flooding. Um, but can we join those messages up more with the other agencies that are also out there running different communication campaigns? Collaboration, which has been a big word this week. I mean, I've covered the floods in Cumbria and Northumberland. We've had far more experience perhaps than we would like in recent years. Some of those lessons have been learned. Have you come up with anything that's new? I think what's going to be new is, is putting different people together, um, having that, uh, that, that opportunity to sort of visualise and present data. So the, the computing power that's now available means we can process that much more quickly and, and present that to people through apps and sort of mobile devices so they have information much more at their fingertips and they can respond more effectively to that. I mean, all the sprints are really important, but flooding's perhaps one of the most emotive ones, isn't it? It is. It's a terrible thing to happen, whether it's sort of river flooding, which we see a lot on the media, whether it's sewer flooding, which you know, is, a, is an awful thing to ha happen to your home or business. And, and you know, we're, we're all about trying to reduce the numbers. And, and one day, maybe we can, can eliminate it. And, and that's, you know, this, this is a first step to that, that vision. We've been properly out and about today. Some of the team had a race on down to Northumberland Street. Here's what happened. This morning we've been out with Flo on Northumberland Street asking our customers about what matters most to them about their water and wastewater services. We've been out here with the customers, letting them know what's been happening in the festival and seeing if the customers have any ideas we can feed back to each of the sprints. That way the sprints actually have a good idea of what solutions they can make for the people who it actually matters to. Probably the most interesting sprint that everyone's cared about has been the Ordnance Survey Sprint, How Green Is Your City? I think that's because a lot of people now are starting to take more of an interest in the environment and wanting to make their own sort of surroundings a lot more interesting and usable. The response so far has been brilliant actually. I think it helps that we've gotten a brilliant nice van to show off and it's been a really large like, range of responses. Reese Innovation is one of the high profile headline sponsors of the Innovation Festival. The Director of Innovation is Chris Pywell and he joins me now. Chris, how has this festival been for you? I mean, why are Reese Innovation involved? Well. Reese Innovation are, as we say on the name in the tin, uh, we're about innovation. And the objectives of this festival are absolutely aligned with what we are trying to do uh, as a company. So in terms of highlights so far, we are just over halfway through. What have been the highlights for you so far? It's bringing disparate groups of people together. So our sprint is particularly concerned with infrastructure and modernizing infrastructure, which sounds like awful jargon, but it's the things that people need to go about their lives, so housing, transport, water, uh, energy, health and well-being, all those sort of facilities, and those are all changing. And just briefly, we can all have ideas, but the great success is in moving those ideas forward. What hope have you for the rest of the week? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we, we started the beginning of the week with what are our problems, what are the things that we need to fix. Uh, yesterday, we talked about uh, what are the big ideas, but now we're drilling down to the practical things about what can we actually do in terms of this innovation, that innovation, that solution. How do we design those? How do we implement those? What sort of organisations do we need to move them forward? With me now is Professor Roy Sambach from Newcastle University. Professor, a very warm welcome. Tell us, what's your interest in the festival? Thanks, Kim. It's fantastic to be here. This region is a hotbed of innovation, an absolute hotbed. And what we're doing this week is we're dealing with six incredible social challenges where we're bringing together such a variety of different groups to solve problems. We've heard all about there being lots of ideas today and they're obviously flowing and they're having to try and cut those down to the ones they're going to follow through. What have you heard that's impressed you? Okay. 
The really interesting thing is that there's new technology which can be applied to old problems. And so what I'm hearing is that in the context, for example, of leakage, we can bring to bear things like drone technology, we can bring to bear big data analysis. We've got the Ordnance Survey here. Why would the Ordnance Survey be of such great value for dealing with issues to do with utilities? Well, because they have a lot of knowledge and knowledge can turn into insights and insights into ideas and ideas into action. You're really quite enjoying yourself, aren't you? Oh, man, this is just perfect for me. Um, <laughs> linking businesses with science and technology and also, by the way, using knowledge, which is not just the knowledge of the expert, but the knowledge of the community. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our roundup from day three of the NWG Innovation Festival. Remember, that's the hashtag, hashtag NWG Innovation Festival. We will see you tomorrow for the roundup of day four. But from all the team at IFTV and from me, Kim Ingalls, have a nice evening.